Hey everybody, welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Rick. I'm Dave. And today on Painting Happy Little Minis, which is where we... We paint minis, and yeah. generally they're happy. And generally. Generally we're yeah. happy. And Yeah, pretty happy. Hopefully the audience is happy. I would hope so. <laughs> uh, and speaking of which, hi to everybody that's already watching on all the different platforms. We've got Sarah, Craig, Keith, and Walter. Excellent. And uh, today we're doing some Come On, um, Come On Games... Song of Song Ice of and Fire. Ice and Fire, Free Folk Giants. Giants. Savage Giants. Yeah, and they really captured my likeness. They did. This, this is perfect. I mean, we should switch out. Like, yeah. We've got this one on the spinner. This is the one I'm going to be painting. Mm-hmm. Okay. This beast with that freaking, I don't know if it's just a big rock wrapped around a, a, a tree trunk. Possibly. Or it might be from like frozen poop or something. Like. Could yeah. be. Could be that. Yeah. Thanks, Leona. What, what are the uh, mammoths? Okay, and uh, then uh, Rick is going to be painting Big Rick. I'm painting myself. Yep. <laughs> Looks perfect. It, it is. I should I should dress as a as a freaking giant, <laughs> a wildling giant. I like how he says that. Like he he never has. Only on Saturdays. Only on Saturdays. Okay. And never in public. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So yeah, so we're going to be painting these and. One of the things about being in the great north, beyond the wall, is the snow and the and uh, also these gents that you're putting <laughs> the uh, Night's Watch. Yep. So, so good. I thought I'd um, pull these up because I know that at uh, at Origins, mm -hmm. when you sat down and you were painting with Adam and Pete from uh, Come on. from Come On, mm -hmm. um, you were talking about you were, there was you were wondering if the <laughs> contrast paints were going to be any good for painting um, Song of Ice and Fire models, too. So now we've had them for a little while. Right. I think we've had them for about a month, maybe okay. just over a month. And you've added them to your toolbox? I have. So the uh, the Night's Watch guys that I've got going around here with the uh, snow on their bases uh, are ones that I painted okay. for an article for Game Trade Magazine, okay. for the painting, having a little minis article there about painting black. And they're painted primed black uh, and highlighted in the usual sort of fashion, okay. so layering and, and that sort of thing, traditional approach. Okay. These other three guys uh, were all done. Oh, can we get back to the spinner? Uh, sorry. <laughs> These other three guys, without the snow on their bases, uh, were all painted using the, the contrast paints. And they look amazing. And they look uh, they look quite cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was really fast to put down those contrast paints. Okay. Uh, let them dry, and then actually I, I did come back and on all of their clothing to sort of bring it to more of that black kind mm -hmm. of look. Um, I washed them all with the uh, Nuln Oil okay. wash just to make everything a little bit darker. And it turned out perfect. But yeah, they turned out perfect and they were about, uh, probably about two thirds the amount of time that I spent on the other, wow. other guys. <clears throat> so the other Sworn Brothers from the Night's Watch that I have at home that are primed black, I think I might be priming them white and then using the contrast okay. paints and going crazy. So I used the um, Wraithbone. Wraithbone Prime Primer for these? Yeah, these. I think that's a that's a cool idea. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think that's going to be the way for us to go. I'm going to quickly pull these off here and put up another dude that I've been working on. It, it's, it's, it's sorry, like, sorry about this thing. This thing is owner. ridiculously cool too. Um, this is a guy that I've been having some fun, fun with, uh, painting him up to send off to uh, a couple of guys in Utah who are running a cool uh, sort of 40k gaming in the gaps kind of game where um, they're building war bands of folks who live on the planet called Galita, okay. which is a frozen ice ball, okay. essentially. Um, I'm not going to be able to make it out for the event, so I thought I'd paint up like an, an NPC Mm -hmm. that they can use in the game. Uh, so this guy's going to be a downed pilot. He's got some important information. He's going to be trudging across the... The wastes. The, the wastes, the, the frozen wastes. Uh, and he's going to have to be picked up and questioned, rescued. And if you can see it, <laughs> in the visor there, Dave painted a mountainscape reflection. <laughs> it yeah. is ridiculous. It's kind of, it was kind of funny. It was a lot of fun to work on oh, that. Oh, it's so good. It was... Uh, it was pretty neat. Uh, I, yeah, 
your skill level, man, <laughs> it always amazes me. And the other thing, too, is what he did, was, which is really nice, is on the back end of the base, as it's coming around right now, I don't know if you can see it too well. Maybe we'll put it under, under the overhead. But he has a, a drag line and the footprints of the pilot in the snow going yeah. through it as well, which is what a, through. what a great effect. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was cool. It was a lot of fun messing around. And that was just with the, uh, that's with the Val Halen Blizzard uh, texture paint. Right. From uh, GW. Okay. So just applied with a um, spackle knife, a, like a putty knife. Uh, well, a, yeah, the a sculpting tool. Okay. So, um, but yeah, it was just a lot of fun. I it's, just just finished it over the weekend, so I thought I'd bring it in. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so it. good. But I used um, the contrast paints on this as well. So the the brown mm -hmm. um, on his uh, coat, it's two coats of the wildwood. Okay. Uh, and the all of his armor is the Agros Dunes over. Okay. Um, same thing. Yeah, it's. Oh, it's a close up on the helmet. So <laughs> okay. So let's switch to the, the Clues cam. Um, I'm just going to point out that my uh, wet palette is probably a little bit too wet at the moment, and that's why the paints are all oh, no. on the way up here. They moved around a lot. But um, here we go. How's that looking? It's kind of tough because we're getting a lot of reflections from all the different lights in the studio, but I think it's looking all right. But yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's cool. <laughs> it was it's a lot of fun. <laughs> such a cool piece. And uh, the group that you're sending that to is definitely getting a, a, an amazing piece to add yeah, to the Hopefully they're gonna have, they're going to have a lot of fun with that. Yeah. So I think it'll be cool. What, um, okay, you're going with the Gulliman flesh? I am, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. I might try the same thing. Then start with the flesh. But, uh, I love, cool. I, I just, I mean, th th this looks so good right off the bat. Yeah. Okay, so who have we got in uh, on YouTube? We've got Mike G saying, hey, everyone. Hey, hey. Uh, Gary Eckert, hey, Rick and Dave. Uh, my G says frozen poop on a stick. I would not want to be hit with that. No, not me. Not at all. It's like, uh, nope. Yep. Uh, and is it, thanks, CL Franklin 15 says, hi, thanks for starting a new hobby for me. Yeah. Uh, it helps me with stress. Yay. Definitely. Definitely. So I'm going to grab some of the Gulam and Flesh as well. I think I might need to shake that a little bit more. How's that looking? Okay? Really good. Very nice already. Yeah. I think with these guys, the um, the cool thing with them is that they're really everything that they're wearing is very organic. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to be lots of furs and rough woven cloth and yeah, that kind of thing, good. ropes and so on. So it's a lot of a lot of warm colors uh, in there. And they just are just beastly. They are. <laughs> <laughs> so in the game, have you used the giants yet? Uh, I haven't used them. Uh, I will admit, I haven't, um, haven't played enough games recently. Okay. But I'd like to. But uh, yeah, they're kind of, uh, they're, um, they're combat abilities, I guess. Maybe the best way to put that. Uh, really interesting. Normally, uh, so they, they fight by themselves. No real surprise there. But uh, rather than having ranks uh, where you get a reduction in the number of attacks you get per, right. um, per rank you lose uh, or possibly per wound you lose, okay. these guys start with one attack. Okay. They hit on a two plus, though. Wow. So that one attack is pretty good. Yeah. And uh, on the card here, so it's called Mighty Swing. Mm -hmm. And if the attack generates any hits, instead of rolling defense dice, the uh, defender suffers D3 plus one wounds, plus one additional wound for each wound that the model, that the giant has taken. Wow. So as he takes wounds, he becomes more dangerous. Okay. Which is pretty uh, pretty wild. 
as they get more angry and upset and hitting a little harder every find time. It <laughs> more difficult to articulate their rage, yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so these guys have five wounds. So it means that some uh, a giant that has suffered four wounds will hit you on a two plus and then cause D3 plus five wounds to the unit. It's going to wipe out a unit. It's yeah. Like, well, D3, so... An all, a regular infantry unit starts at 12. So, yeah. But generally, if, if a unit's been able to do, like, four wounds of damage to a giant, chances are they're down to their second rank. Mm-hmm. And then you can potentially wipe out an entire... Entire unit, unit in one go. Yep. Could be eight wounds. Their, um, <laughs> yeah, it's great. Their armor save is only a, um, a four plus, though. Okay. So, but they are, how many points are they? They're seven points, so that's kind of around about, that's kind of on the top end of infantry. Okay. Um, seven and eight is kind of the, the most that inf- infantry units cost. But I think using a, a couple of these together be pretty grim. I would agree. For your opponent. Not for you. The, uh, so what did you do this weekend? This weekend I painted that guy. Yeah, yeah. No, well, right. not, not cool. just that. Not just that. I, tried, I did try to stay inside and there was another reason I was painting like a nice world yeah. kind of stuff because it was Hot. 100 degrees <laughs> here in Baltimore. Ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. And it was, uh, I know it was hot in other parts of the country as well. In many parts of the country. Yes. It was funny, one of my friends in Chicago was complaining about the heat and the humidity. And I said, how hot is it there? And he goes, it's like 90 degrees. I said, oh, well, then I said, and, and what's the humidity like? And he goes, it's like, it's like 65 de- 65%. <laughs> and that's when I laughed. <laughs> nice. I, in, in Baltimore, it's it's... 100 and 100. Thanks for coming. Yeah, the, the weather was not inviting this weekend, and my socks is my AC's out. Oh, jeez. So, so. And you don't like the heat anyway. I do not. So did you spend the entire time at the cinema? No, I did, but I did go to the cinema. <laughs> okay, cool. What did um, you go and see? Uh, Toy Story f- uh, 4. Cool. Took my uh, son to go watch that. And How was it? Um... Toy Story 3 was the closure to that story arc for me. Okay. Toy Story 4 was a little bit um, too much. Okay. Unnecessary. It was unnecessary, okay. Was it cute? Yes. Didn't make you cry, though. Like Toy Story 3 did. Uh, well, I'm not going to say that. Yeah. I cried at Toy Story 3. There what? you go. Wow. No, I'm going to say I didn't say... I, what I'm saying is I'm not oh, going to say I didn't cry. You didn't cry during 4. Oh, okay, right. Here. You know... You sure that wasn't when when they said, "Okay, well, hold two tickets and two popcorns. That'll be seven hundred dollars." And that's when I cried. <laughs> we have a question on YouTube. Oh, question on YouTube. Cool. Uh, oh, Dorky Dad is here. Um, okay, Mike G. Oh, sorry, I'm going to jump back up and I'll get to the Dorky Dad's question in a second. Uh, Mike G says, "Geez, that's crazy. Being from Utah and knowing the snow-covered mountains." It's going to go over great. Uh, Dorky Dad says, oh boy, my first live stream live. Joy of joys. Okay. <laughs> uh, then he asks, do you folks prime the WizKids figures or just use as provided? I've only painted a couple of their oxen but found them to be slippery despite being advertised as primed. Um, we typically in here, we just straight straight, straight out of the pack. Yeah. Um, if you are finding that they're a little bit slippery, uh, as in the the paint is beating on them. I'd give them a quick wash in um, like dish soap. Just get an old toothbrush and give them a quick scrub. Rinse them off, dry them off. Try it then. And if you're still finding it's a little bit slippery, just hit them with a primer. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But generally in here, yeah, we just go straight out of the pack. Yeah. Uh, And then Dorky Dad says, regarding the heat, I think we hit 115 degrees here in Phoenix area. And then he says, but it's a dry heat. It's true. It, it is a dry heat, just like the oven. Just like, <laughs> just the, like oven. the oven. 
but it's a dry heat. That's one of the reasons I really like conventions. Yes. <laughs> it's 72 what, and indoors. Yeah, 72 and indoors. The weather is fine. Come on in. Yeah. That's what I say whenever I come back from a convention. And somebody asks me how the weather was. 72 and indoors. Perfect. <laughs> Mike G says, I'm, I miss dry heat, and I always prime myself. Wait, yourself and the miniatures? And the miniatures. Or you, you always prime any of the miniatures. Uh, say hi to Dave, uh, James. Um, hey, James. Everybody's really impressed with your your miniature. There, the snow Dave. dude. Yeah. Robert okay. uh, Malik is with us. Hi, everybody. Been a while since I caught the stream. Hi, Robert. Welcome back. Uh, Josh Alexander. Hey. Uh, filmed in an apartment that was 35 degrees Celsius with 15 plus people on Sunday and Monday. That does that, not sound good. It sounds like my own personal. Personal kind of hell. hell. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Who's that, James? Is that? Yeah. I'm sure it was worth it, though, James. I'm sure it was worth it. Heat, okay. Body heat. Oof. Yep. The worst. Okay, that's the one flesh. I think I'm going to mess around with the skeleton horde for some of the. So, what are you missing? What are you putting on there? So I'm putting on the snake bite leather on the, okay. on the legs. Oh wow, I haven't actually used the snake bite leather yet. It's nice. It looks great. Oh. Agoras June, there it is, snake bite leather. I shake those both at the same time. Dang. I know, check it what? out. <laughs> going crazy. What I'm gonna do with the um, with the hair mm -hmm. uh, and that sort of thing is I'm gonna mess around with the um, Apothecary white, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah, the apothecary white. Um, but because I've got some of the Gollum and flesh mm -hmm. up on the um, up on his fur, okay. Then I'm going to uh, wait until it dries, wait until the Gollum and flesh dries, and then go back and touch it up with the um, wraithbone base. Oh, okay. So it has a, a consistent look underneath it. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, this snake bite looks so good. Yeah, it does. I like it. So I'm going to use some of that as well. But I won't use it in the same areas. Great. How about that? Yeah? Right. Different area. Okay. I can dig it. And then uh, next week, we'll be at Gen Con. Speaking of conventions. Speaking of conventions. That won't be 72 degrees, though. No. That's going to be quite warm. Yep, even on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> um, but really excited for that. And if anybody watching will be at Gen Con, uh, if you see Dave, myself, um, anybody from uh, Game Trade uh, Magazine or media running around, stop us. Say hi. Say, I love to watch your show. In that voice. Exactly that voice. Yes. And then... Uh, Let's see, I think uh, Kurt Pearson is going to be there. Cool. As well, uh, who was, you know, a Game Trade alum. Yep. <laughs> and, Kurt's uh, still in Florida. He is. is that Florida, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, he's he's like, not in Ohio anymore. No, he's like 15 minutes away from Disney. Okay, ready. And um, he's going to be running a D&D &D campaign setting, uh, like a first look, and uh, we, it's a, a campaign setting that I'm helping with. Excellent. And uh, our first module will be ran at Gen Con as a kind of show off the world, get some feedback, um, and all the sessions, sadly, have sold out. So Sadly? That sadly, sounds like a wonderful thing. It is. It, it is both wonderful and sad in that... It's sad that other people can't yeah, if you, immediately join in. Exactly. Right. Okay. But it's fantastic that it's sold out. Yeah. And that's called the Severed Veil, is that the right? Severed Veil. Severed mm -hmm. Veil. Look at me remembering things. Uh-oh. It's probably because I've been posting up too much stuff. No, not too much. <laughs> I would have told you. Just enough. You have been like, slow it down, right? Easy now. Quit inviting us to 13 different groups. <laughs> I know you're not going to listen to me when I say that. That's true. Well, that's going to be cool. Yeah. Um, how many sessions is Kurt running? Uh, four. Four. Awesome. Yeah. One, a, one a day. 
and uh, so it should be a lot of fun. Uh, our tagline for the world is there are no gods here there right. are no gods here because uh, that's part, part of the sever part is uh, connection to the deities has been cut off severed if you will yep so that's kind of fun. cool yeah that's good and I liked when you were describing that that you, it was like that includes so that there's no clerical magic there is no clerical magic yeah, and it's a... It's going to be dangerous. It's scary, dangerous, yeah. Granted, druids still have some healing, so right. they're, they're your band-aids now. Okay. And uh, there is another, a new mage class that um, does something that can be both horrific and interesting. Is that the surgeon class? Okay, where they can come along with, right, a, we, with we, a bone saw right, and so cut off your did, leg? We do have a surgeon <laughs> class, and we spelled it the old old English way. Okay. Where it looks like chirurgeon, chirurgeon or whatever. Oh, C-H, surgeon. 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 Okay. And then, um, but no, it's a... I thought maybe you were going to say you spelt it with a T. Sturgeon. Sturgeon. No. Mm, tasty. Tasty fish. Tasty fish. Um, no, th- so because the realm has been severed from pretty much all other planar ev- uh, places, Yep. and souls can't leave the realm, um, there's a mage that can actually take the souls that are trapped and convert their energy into either boosting their powers, okay. their, spe- their, other, their, their normal magic user spells, or potentially doing some form of healing. Okay. But it, it's destroying a soul, which is dark. Yeah. Excellent. That's yeah. cool. You're also doing some other, other streaming? We are. Of things? Mm-hmm. We're going to be streaming um, a couple... Uh, RPG sessions. Uh, one session will be Kids on Bikes, and another one will be um, the Sentinel Comics RPG by Greater Than Games. Excellent. Which uh, will be th- Thursday, will be the um, Sentinel Comics, and then Friday will be Kids on Bikes. Cool. Saturday we'll be streaming some of the pop up Gen Con games. Oh, that, awesome. That people who go to their local stores that are participating in pop up Gen Con will also get to see. Yep. Like um, Terror Below and Bargain, um, uh, shoot, what's it called? Bargain Quest? Bargain Quest. Bargain Quest. And then... Um, uh, Isn't Bargain Quest simply Terror like Below. A- Amazon Prime Day? Bargain Quest is Am- Amazon Prime Day, yeah. But, but, it, as, but a, as a board game. But uh, as a board game, this is basically a game of adventurers that have come back from their quests have all their monies and golds and things, their treasure. Okay. And it's time to spend it. Right. <laughs> how do you spend how do you spend your monies, your treasures, your Excellent. ill-gotten gains? That's funny. I know that I when I was regularly playing D and D it was there was not really an opportunity to find bargains. <laughs> That's true. There was, there was one there was one store in the town. Um James says, when is Gen Con again? It's literally next week, Thursday through Sunday. Uh, so that's the 31st through the 3rd, or 4th. 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 Right? Yep. Or not 3rd. So it's 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th. Yeah, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th. So. Uh, but we'll be painting, doing painting Happy Little Minis next Tuesday? Yes. All right. Cool. Mm-hmm. And then, I think uh, next Tuesday we should paint um, something from Firelock Games, I think. Oh, cool. Is what I have written down. Because we have a bunch of uh, pirates and ship captains. Excellent. So we, they sent us to paint, so we should probably do that. They had a very good display at uh, Historicon oh, yeah. last weekend. And... Uh, as well as the, um, what do you call it? What? As well as Blood and Plunder. Okay. They had uh, Oak and Iron. All right. Uh, sort of demo games of Oak and Iron. They haven't, um, haven't started shipping that yet. But that's a, I think it's a 1 600th scale naval game. Nice. In the same, like, Age of Sail, Age of, Golden Age of Piracy kind of okay. setting. And they had, um, 
a demo table for a game that they've been working on, which is an adaptation of Blood and Plunder for World War One. Okay. Uh, small skirmish groups, that kind of thing, uh, doing particular scenar scenarios, uh, not just like not just naval based stuff. No, okay. not not naval based. Sorry, the World War One game is twenty eight mil infantry. Oh. Uh, and the game is called uh, Blood and Valor. Ooh, nice. So, but yeah, it's using the same um, engine okay. as uh, Blood and Plunder. That sounds cool. Yep. Really. I'm going to tell you with these contrast paints that I'm really enjoying the. Um, where is it? Where is it? Now it's hiding. Wildwood. Okay. Because it's a really dark brown that goes on really smoothly in one nice. coat. <laughs> I'll have to, that, that might need, need to be the next color I use. Yeah. So. Um, any big highlights from San Diego Comic Con? Did not go to San Diego Comic Con this year. Um, but if you want to find out some of the cool highlights that some of our teammates uh, on the Previews World side got from San Diego, make sure you're checking out previewsworld.com and all of their other social media platforms. And this Wednesday on their Facebook page, when they uh, do uh, Previews World Weekly, they're going to have some highlights uh, from San Diego in there. Cool. So. Excellent. And that was, uh, was it Troy? Troy, Ashton, Johnny. Cool. Got to go out to that. Yeah. Excellent. They got some great footage. Uh, just looking over at the YouTube chat, uh, Mike G says, funny you're painting those giants today. This weekend I killed two of them in my tourney. Ooh. First giants I ever killed in any game system. Nice. So that's cool. Was it just, did you kill them by hitting them or uh, causing morale problems for them, Mike G? Because that's the other thing to remember about Song of Ice and Fire is that... Yeah, there is the morale checks. Yep. Mind you, these guys have a morale of uh, three plus. Okay. Which I think is pretty good. As in, they're unlikely to fail. Yeah, they're pretty... Uh, once they get their mind set on something, they're... <laughs> yep. So one of the... Um, well, I'm, I'm going to let some of this paint dry in a second and then check out a detail. So I said they have five wounds, but their armor save is only four plus. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it could be fairly easy to put wounds on them. Okay. But uh, one, of the, one of the spaces on the tactics board that you're. Um, Where you're non. Non, non combat yeah. units? Yeah. Yep, they can jump on and, and grab that space. I can't remember which space it is, I must admit. But um, I'm just going to check and see if they have some other um, or if any of their characters have abilities that enhance that. I guess you'd want to keep them, keep them around. Chances are they do. Craig says I should give my giant red hair. I was actually thinking about doing that. Yeah. Good job, Craig. Good, good call. Um, Walter says, don't forget to bring back some uh, swag for those of us who can't attend. <laughs> and he also says, don't forget the monster train will be there too. Yep, monster, um, monster fight club will have their stuff set up at Gen Con. Yep. Okay. We have what? Tormund Giant Spain is commander. Okay. So Tormund Giant Spain, Thunderfist. Um, okay, nothing that would affect that there. Just as a character, nothing that impacts there. Mance Raider, King Beyond the Wall as a commander. Is there something that bolsters their... their um Morale? Well, it's, I think the morale is already high. Yeah, like the Free Folk Raiders, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the guys who, they're the 
sort of the um, the cannon fodder, really. Okay. Our morale eight plus. Jesus. The giants are three plus, so I don't think there's you got anything there that's going to mess with that. Mance Raider though has an inspiring present. This unit's morale stat becomes six plus, and he counts as a rally point. Friendly units within short range, which is six inches, may use this morale unit's morale stat for all morale tests. So you keep him in the middle of the yeah. um, of your uh, free folk raiders. Leaders. Here we go, Lady Val. Um, when Val claims a zone on a tactics board, you may replace its effect with the effect of the uh, horse instead. Okay. Uh, which is a maneuver. I think somebody gets a free maneuver then. So she's there to keep um, keep people moving around. Mance Raider as an NCU. Mance influences a unit, they gain one condition token, your choice. While influencing a unit, that unit suffers penalties based on the number of condition tokens on them. Okay. Effects are cumulative. Nice. So if he puts one, one token, minus one attack die and minus one movement, two tokens, additional to that is minus one to hit on all attacks, and three plus tokens, unit loses all abilities. Wow. Which is pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Craster, um, when Craster claims a zone on the tactics board, you may replace it with this effect. Uh, draw one tactics card and restore up to two wounds on one friendly combat unit. Okay, so if somebody's already taken the, if you've already taken or your opponent has already taken the zone that mm -hmm. allows you to restore up to D3 wounds on a unit, okay. then you can also use Craster to jump out there and it could be, the, he, you can put him on the horse or the money bags or whatever. Mm -hmm. And use that instead. Okay. Which is cool. So yeah, I think if you're going to have giants, you probably want to have Craster in your oh, absolutely. in your list. Then we got tactics cards. Um, you can tell that Dave is a war gamer at heart. <laughs> All right, James. Have a wonderful day at work. <laughs> James yep. says, Rick, it could be a part of the Firelock Orcs. He is a merc that works with the Orcs. Yes. Which one is 1-1? One, one? I don't think 1-1 one, one is actually... No, they haven't um, haven't released him yet. But I, I did the other thing as well. Mm -hmm. When I contacted you this morning, I said, what are we painting today? Yeah. Because I wanted to know what T-shirt to wear. So wearing the Mormont shirt was perfect for giants. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, it's going to be perfect for undead giants. Undead giants. Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, that's not in the book, so... Um, okay, so yeah, here's, here's one. When a friendly unit, friendly infantry unit activates, remove up to four models from other friendly infantry units within long range, restore that many wounds to this unit. Ah, that's a shame, because I don't think the giant counts as infantry. No? Uh, maybe. I'll have to check that. No, it's a monster. Mm. That's a shame. Okay. Just looking at ways of keeping these guys in the fight longer. Hmm. Oh, here we go. When a friendly unit successfully charges, one friendly unit within long range may restore up to D3 plus one wounds. Okay. So that's if you've taken Tormund Giant's Bane as your leader. Okay. If Tormund's unit charged, Restore up to four wounds. Dang. Nice. All right. So there you go. Tormund is commander and Craster is an NCU. Okay. That's the way to go. That's the way to go? I think so. All right. I can totally take that. This. I think all of my golden flesh is dried there, so I'm going to jump in and hit some of the... I am giving this guy a little bit of a reddish orange. Oh, cool. Hair. Which um, which paints that? Is that the? This is the Griff Hound Orange. Griff Hound Orange, cool. I because I just felt like that um, Blood Angel Red. Just oh, too just red. Too red. Yeah, for sure. No, that the Griff Hound Orange is going to be perfect for it. 
the other thing as well to do a little bit of extra highlighting mm -hmm. is you could get some some white or some uh, even some of the wraith bone, this okay. wraith bone, and mix it in with the okay. with the griffhound orange to do some highlighting. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, uh, so the rest of this week we're going to do some more free folk on Thursday. Yeah. Um, then this weekend is, we, there's Oticon down in D.C. Okay. I'm thinking, uh, are you going to that, yeah. Leona? Okay. And I'll Leona be sounded super excited about going to that. No, I am excited. <laughs> And I actually, my son and I will be there on Saturday. Oh, cool. Um, he's all about anime and all that stuff. So uh, he, when he heard that there was an anime convention to be attended nearby. Yeah, he was all over it. Yeah, he's like, uh, so we're doing this, right? <laughs> we're going to take a break from D&D &D for a day. I know. Or at least a, the morning. Yeah. He has been all about <laughs> that life this summer, which is awesome. That's a perfect time to do it. Yeah. I just like the fact that he'll literally unplug from his Xbox and his phone and, yep. and play D&D. &D. It's just awesome. And uh, when I say from his phone, like he'll put it down and during the session yep. not pick up his phone. Not pick it up. Yep. That's great. Yeah. I was super surprised because he's... His face is constantly in that phone. <laughs> All right. Okay. There we go. That's nice and quick touch up. Oh, yeah. That guy looks so there. good. Hmm? He looks so good. Let the that orange hair mm -hmm. down the sides. He's looking a little bit down his arms. Are looking a little bit more like a, an orangutan. An orangutan. orangutan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think. Um. Think afterwards, if you do some highlighting, mm -hmm. maybe run a like a uh, seraphim sepia wash yeah. over it. That'll just change that tint yeah. a little bit. Okay. Let's see how this apothecary white is going to go. Here's how he's looking. What do you think? And that snake bite leather is really good. Mm. Very cool. I do like it. Okay. I'm actually just going to move my wet palette out of the way. Super distract. What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think we like minis here. So, for anybody that's watching, that this might be your first time tuning in. Uh, we like to show off some miniatures that are um, our community paints in the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group, which if you haven't joined yet, please go do that. Check it out. <gasps> Drew has been painting loads of Star Wars Legion. Yes. Loads and loads of Stormtroopers. Yeah, these look so good, too. They do look cool. I love that, uh, all the red, the red detailing there. I'm sure it's for a particular unit. From, I'm not sure. From something. Uh, Jason with the Hammer Clank Monster Apocalypse. That looks amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> that is so good. Yeah. I, I'm, I, the mini, mini itself is, is wild. Yeah. All of the, the stuff that's been coming out for Monster Apocalypse has been pretty crazy. We should paint some of that stuff soon. That'd be neat. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, just the work that he done on that. Yeah, he did a great that job. chest in particular. And I think that, yeah, the metal looks fantastic, too. Mm -hmm. Great work, Jason. Nick Barbian, Dungeons and Doggies. Oh, nice. Is that a, is that a Pomeranian? It is. It's a Pomeranian. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's awesome. It is, uh, is fantastic. That's from the uh, Steamforged games. Uh, guys did that. Looks, uh, looks fantastic. So good. Yeah. We'll have to stop by their booth and say hi yeah. at Gen Con. Sean with a work in progress pair of 3D printed Sahaugans. I don't know if I'm saying that right. That's just how I've always said it. That's because you're from Michigan. It may be. That I, could be it. 
Yeah. Yeah. I could have. I could have went. I don't with know. It's, it sounds Sturgeon. like a stu- You could have. The, 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 yeah. the Hergens. Pure, yeah. uh, <laughs> I also call them Sahagen. Uh, and what's neat about these miniatures and also the race is, every once in a while they'll give birth to a to one that looks like a sea elf and oh, okay. not one, like what they normally look like, right. and they become super spies. Oh, okay. Would fight them, and that looks amazing. Yeah, they look great. <laughs> I love the. Uh, it's kind of that um, on the uh, scales mm-hmm. of the thigh. They had that that shimmering yeah. kind of look. Yeah, just on the uh, the one on the left there looks looks ace. Yeah. Nice work, Sean. So good. <clears throat> Art Dominguez, folklore uh, and mansions of madness. Okay, nice. Uh, very uh, Cthulhu esque. Yep. These are some things that would would send me mad. Yeah. Particularly the guy, I, I think that guy's got a uh, guitar over his shoulder. What? That's just the worst. That, that's yep. enough to drive anybody crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that can warp the neck. It can. It can yeah, it, so you yeah. really should carry that in a case. I but, agree. But uh, apart from that, <laughs> the miniatures look amazing. Everything's fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that looks good. great. Nice work, Art. Ultramarine Contemptor? Yeah, Contemptor Dreadnought. Oof. Yep. Nice. Very cool. Looking good, and uh, this one is obviously a sergeant. Is it? Well, obviously, it, how? How can I tell? Yes. The, re- the red helmet. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ultramarine sergeants have red helmets. I did so not know that. This one would have been a sergeant before he died and was interred in a. In the Ultramarine. Uh, in the dreadnought. Okay. When I say died, I mean like almost died. He's kind of still alive in the sarcophagus there. The sarcophagus slash uh, iron lung. That iron is lung. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Uh, William West with a uh, Ogren from Games Workshop. Oh, very cool. Yeah, this what? is a this is an older one. This is a, a '90s okay. era Ogren. But uh, yeah, it's just basically a big ogre, big gun. Okay. Large caliber caliber rounds. Is it part of 40k or is it yep. fantasy? No, 40k. Okay. It's uh, from the Imperial Imperial Guard army. He just looks so angry in his face. Oh yeah, so yeah, mad. yeah for sure. Mm. And and having the the band aids on the shoulder, yeah, is fantastic as well. So That's good. part of the sculpt. Okay, but yeah, looks great. Yeah, nice work, William. Uh, Peter, uh, with a work in progress. Um, this is Pete from uh, Come On. Yep. And I'm not sure what. There are some wings on the left. Yeah. That look pretty amazing. I agree. The pink and the uh, that pinkish purple mm-hmm. and the green is working really nicely together. It's like a desaturated green, mm-hmm. but a really saturated purple. Looks great. It's going to be interesting. I can't wait to see what, what the final piece looks like. I'm wondering if that's a were shark on the right hand side. A were shark? Given he Pete, does like Pete's sharks. predilection for sharks. Yeah, he does. I think it could be that. All right. yeah, excellent. We'll see. Looking good, Pete. Joshua with a tiefling warlock. This is part of the Null Source line. Yep. And uh, it's interesting that it's the first one I've seen that someone used a green ink for the spell effect. For the spell effect? effect? Yeah. yeah. It yep. looks great. Well, I think it looks really good against the, it's obviously really good against the red of the, the skin. So skin. Pete says that those are the wings from Cthulhu, the giant Cthulhu that. Oh, from you know, uh, Death May Die? Yeah. Wow. And then um, yeah. The shark is a shark wrestler from Rumble Slam. Right. Okay. Rumble Slam from TT Combat. Nice. Nice. So it was a, like, a, I was kind of right. Yeah. Wear shark. Wear shark. Wrestler. Nice. But uh, yeah, this t thing looks great. Nice work. Yeah. Good job, Joshua. Joshua. Craig Starnes, homemade uh, dice tower terrain piece. Yeah, that looks really cool, doesn't cool. it? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, it's great when you can integrate something like that. Into mm-hmm. a, um, into onto your, your table. Yeah. And so you just got a dice tower. It doesn't. Yeah, it just looks like part yep. of the natural train of what you're trying to immerse your players into. Yep. Yeah. It looks cool. I, uh, I painted up one for uh, my buddy Joey for his um, cyberpunk table. So it's a uh, dice tower that looks like a like a sewage works, okay. sewage plant kind of thing. Yeah. Looks great. Yep. Nice work. Uh, Corey McCord, his first Space Marine. Fantastic, yep. I think that was done using the um, ultramarine blue contrast paint. It looks great. Yep. Yeah. And the uh, the cracked earth looks really neat too. 
That yeah. orange yeah. again, orange and blue. So good, good job. Robert with a goblin slayer, as all goblins are. Slayers. Slayers. Slayer. Slayer. This kind of looks like a goblin from um, the, the labyrinth. labyrinth. It does with have that, that big kind of helmet. helmet. Yeah. yeah, enormous helmet and tiny, tiny uh, little hand, tiny sword. Mm -hmm. It looks yep. great. It does Good look job. cool. Jordan with a Hero Forge Goblin Wizard. Okay. Cool. For those of you, again, that don't know, Hero Forge is a site where you can go and get a custom-made miniature printed. Yep. You can pick out a lot of different uh, different parts yeah. and put them together. Looks Steve, neat. Uh, nice with work. Oh. A Reaper Metal Gargoyle. Oh, wow. Nice. Back, I would totally back when Reaper did a whole bunch of metal miniatures before the bones. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, they still, right. still sell them. But uh, that's great looking. Yeah, I would fight model. that. You would? Oh, I love gargoyles. Yeah. yeah. Well, how would you get to it? It's sitting on a, a rock in the middle of a, a lava lake. Well, um, I Can would see cast that? levitate. Yeah. From the left. Yeah, I'd cast yeah. levitate. Levitate? Yeah. And, and you'd, would you levitate the goblin it, to you? Correct. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Because it would sort of disorient it. Right. And if, okay. if the levitation spell fell, faltered into the lava, it goes. Well, it's got wings, so it would Dang fly. It. Moving right along. Nice work, Steve. <laughs> Uh, Jason with a Cloud Giant. Oh, excellent. I yep. love the Cloud Giant. This is a, another WizKids piece. Yep. Um, Jason's been working on this yeah. bit. It looks really good. It looks real great. So you got uh, all the, uh, the purple tinges to the, mm -hmm. to it's, the, it's the good. smoke. All good. Colin Jessup with a, what appears to be a rat folk and a dwarf and a brazier of some sort. I'm not sure if it's a dwarf. I think it's a wizard with a, with a scythe. Okay. Yeah. You can only see part of it. I can, yeah. You've seen the whole story. Yeah. <laughs> I like but, it. But, uh, yeah, definitely looks cool. I love the flames in that brazier. Look really good. Yes. I think the, nice one. the scroll work, the color and the descriptive on that scroll. Yep. It's that looks really good. cool, too. Yeah. Good job, Colin. Nice. Joel with an overseer from Massive Darkness. Oh, that thing is freaky. Yes. I'm frightened by that. And Pete, if you're still watching that overseer right there, I can't wait to see what kind of stats that might have <laughs> for a non-massive darkness. Non-massive product. darkness game. Because <laughs> yeah. that's exactly what you'd do. Yeah. You'd take it and you'd use it elsewhere. Absolutely. It looks so good, though. It good does job, look cool. Joel. Very nice. Ah, uh, Sarah. Sarah is working on a Reaper Lizardman, Ralph Arthur 1982 Ogre. Wow. Reaper Blackburn. So oh, I, I, I recognize oh, these miniatures. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I always love seeing miniatures that are older than Gretchen. <laughs> it's super funny. It's also true. Not older than both of us, but, uh, but yeah, they look great. Very cool. Those are so old school, and they look great. Good job, Sarah. Yeah. You can tell they're super old school because that ogre is only a little bit taller than the, the, than the human. And the human, and yeah. The, yeah. <clears throat> so they look great, Sarah. Nice work. Jen Rogers, a, oh, a Signar model from War Machine. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Normally, um, a lot of people, the studio color is blue, mm -hmm. blue and, and white for Signar, and uh, okay. everybody, almost everybody paints their Signar stuff blue. But this green looks really nice. Yeah, it does. The green and, green and yellow just. Commission piece? Okay. Cool. It's nice. So uh, I wondered, uh, did Jan mention if the. Uh, the client requested the green, or? I think so. Okay. But yeah, I think, I think it's a great choice. Yeah, it looks really, yeah. really nice. It pops really well. Yep, great work. Uh, this, we don't get a lot of War Machine models on here. No, I'm not sure so I agree. It's really cool to actually see something from that, yeah, that definitely. line as well. Um, looks great. Thank you so much, uh, Leona, for showing those. And for everybody watching again, if you have not yet gone to the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group, Jump on over there, request to join, we'll add you in. We'd love to see your works in progress and your completed works. If you have a skill set that you'd like to share to help everybody else's toolbox get a little better, uh, please do that as well, because uh, we like to learn more stuffs. We do, always and, uh, with the learning. Also, uh, Josh from Mini Painting Studios. Uh, we'll get you next time, buddy. Hmm? He's, he's in the process of his move. He is, yeah. Uh, so. Um, so he's moving from Oklahoma to Texas, where mm -hmm. I always thought he lived. I always Correct. thought he lived in Texas, but did. now he's going to be living in Texas. 
Uh, and he was really excited over the weekend as well because uh, the Mini Painting Studio Facebook page reached uh, 10K, right? Uh, 5K. 5K. 5, okay. 5,000 likes, 5,000 nice. followers, which is really cool. Nice. But uh, yeah, so we'll be excited once uh, Josh gets his studio up and running again, which will be awesome. Yeah. And he's going to be really close to the Reaper headquarters, so he can be doing some more like tutorials and classes with them. Yeah. And also, I believe he's going to be real close to um, one of the Warhammer Citadels. Oh, the Warhammer Citadel. Or the... The only one. I did not know that that was the case. Yeah, it's, it's the only one. Wow. All right. In uh, Texas. Okay. In near Dallas. All right. I think. I can't remember exactly. But That's a big deal. It is. It is. There we go. And also make sure good. if you do have some works in progress that you have uh, that you want to get highlighted on the show, uh, again, post them up in the group and uh, you know, we'll snag them and put them up on there for everybody to see. Yep. I'm going to go with, uh, oh, that's what I need to use. I'm going to go with the Dark Oath Flesh. Okay. But I'm going to thin it down with some medium for the front of his, um, okay. say his loincloth kind of front, because yeah. I wanted that to be different to the uh, snake bite leather on the back. Right. Word. There we Gross. go. <laughs> that is cool. a distinct sound. Oh, I was hoping they went together to make some sort of flying wear shark. <laughs> he said that would have been a cool conversion. <laughs> she said, time to read the bits box. So. The, uh, yeah. the other thing about that whole, that Cthulhu that, that yep. someone has, uh, that thing is ginormous. And yeah. if you did not get one, uh, Pete, is there, how can someone get one of those things? Because I feel like it was like a special that you could only get with the Kickstarter, if there was a Kickstarter, I think, on that, P, that particular. Yeah, was. Kickstarter only? Yeah. Well, fair enough, I guess. Yeah. Because uh, there's a lot of production yeah. in that. <laughs> I will say, I would love to paint one. Yeah. That would be cool. But I got to finish the uh, five headed five headed dragon still, really? and I've got to finish uh, the the walking soldier. Oh, you do, yeah. You're just all about picking the most enormous models. Yes, <laughs> because even my hands are still miniatures. No. <laughs> like I I'm am Juan, so large. Like I'm Juan Juan over here. Yes, you are. <laughs> I've seen you knock down a knock down a fortress gate. March your way in. I've done it. Get some food. Granted, it was made out of those those uh, those blocks that kids have at kindergarten, the red bricks. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say it's made out of graham crackers or something like that. Oh, yeah, that was what. Sure. Those absolutely wouldn't survive. It was made out of Lincoln logs. Mm -hmm. And you were seven. Correct. <laughs> Seventy. Pain on oh, Pete answered. Cool. Uh, there was a retail pledge, so check your local. Uh, Friendly local game store to Ooh, see if they ordered them. I know a place that might have gotten them then. I'm pretty certain that uh, games stuff would definitely have ordered some. Yeah. Jeff, if you're watching, <laughs> is, we don't actually call anybody anymore. No, nope, just watch. We don't send them messages. We just we just have them watch the show and yeah. ask them questions. We, and we and hope chat. that they are actually watching. <laughs> yep. It's all good. It's funny. Funny. Okay. So, folks, what color should I do this? Sort of. Well, we've only got of four stuff. minutes. Oh. For today's episode. Looking at it, I think. Well, down here, it looks like some things are stitched, but it looks like these could be stones. And if I did this as ice, mm -hmm. like okay. stones embedded in ice. Yeah. And strapped together. Well, let's try that. Okay. Let's do that. 
But first off, I'm going to hit this with. But first, let me take a selfie. Is that what you're going to say? Hmm? Let me take a selfie? <laughs> no, I said I'm going to hit this with. Oh, okay. Did you see me reach my, from my phone? No. No, okay. You never heard that song? No. Oh, okay. That makes sense. My children are not teenagers, so. That's true. <laughs> and that's one of the other funny things about having my son with me all summer is I'm learning things. Yeah? Yeah. Things that I probably shouldn't know. Shouldn't know? Yeah. Okay. Or that confuse me with my, you know, old Alzheimer brain. Okay. I saw, I saw a meme yesterday, which was like, the kids are just... Dragon glass. Dragon glass. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, I can do it as dragon glass for sure. But, uh, yeah, no, I saw a meme yesterday okay. which was uh, kind of funny. Is that the kids of today will only know Billy Ray Cyrus from Old Town Road. Right. Which breaks my heart, my achy, breaky heart. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> and off it goes. Oh, no. Sorry, folks. Sorry. That's good. And, oh, we should probably show this as well. Oh, yeah. This is the, the rest of the miniature insert from the uh, Free Folk starter set, box set, that we grabbed the, the, the giants out Savage of. Giants from. Yeah. I can pop this up on the spinner for the moment. But, oh, uh, so, yeah, once we... I mean, we're going to finish them Thursday. very quickly on Thursday. Mm -hmm. But now that we know that Tormund Giants Bane and Craster are going to be good for using in, in an army. We should probably paint them. Mm -hmm. So there's Craster. We'll put him there. Oh, in the chair. Yep. Nice. And there's Tormund Giant's Bane. Oh. Dang. There we go. Has it stopped? So slow. No. We're gonna have to, I'm going to have to contact Elon Musk to have him uh, send me an updated en version of this. Enhance. Yeah. Enhance. Yeah. So. Those look good. Cool. Yeah, so maybe we can prep those and have them ready to, to roll on Thursday too. Yeah. Uh, Walter, does anyone know if there is a shop that sells antediluvian miniatures <gasps> in the U.S.? Ooh, That's a good question. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Alzheimer's brain? Uh, best best tasting to... to really <laughs> so say. Saying that. It's in zombies. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like having maple syrup on the mind all the time. Kind of just, Super tasty mind. Yeah, Super, Super tasty, tasty brain. <laughs> yes. Very cool. And I, I agree that uh, definitely going to have to do some highlighting on, the, on that red hair. Um, because it is his hair. The, the giant it, on his arms and back, it's yeah. his hair. It's not like... A, a that. weird fur thing. Yeah. So. But yeah, I think some, some highlighting and then a, a quick tint with the Seraphim CPU oil. Yeah. It'll still look um, mm -hmm. red. Right. Like a, a ginger. But yeah. Cool. Neat. All right, everybody. Well, that's our show today. Uh, thank you so much for watching Penny Happy Little Minis. Make sure you go to your friendly local game store and become part of the painting community that they provide. Uh, and if they don't have one, maybe you could be the one that starts at, at, their, at your friendly local game store. Indeed. I'm Rick. I'm Dave. And we'll see you at a game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.